Are we ready to proceed on the matter of Brandon Durham? <coughs> Okay. Would each of you please raise your right hand? The testimony you're about to give, the man not being heard before this court, you saw me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Stay ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Well, I won't be testifying. You're not going to testify, all right? Okay. Uh, I already informed the court. One of our first witness is the security officer, Lance Wall. I don't know if he's treated. Raise your right hand, please. Testimony about to give the man now being heard before this court. You saw me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, something you got? I do. Okay. You state your name for the record. My name is Lance Walton, W A L T O N. Mr. Walton, how are you employed? I'm the second Region 2 supervisor for the uh, administrative office of the courts in the state of New Hampshire. What are your day to day duties? I supervise the security in, the, in the, uh, the local district courts throughout the southwestern portion of the state of New Hampshire. I want to draw your attention to October 19, 2009, approximately 8.30 in the morning. Were you working at that date and time? Yes, sir. Do you remember where you were working? I was working here at the Keene District Court. What were your duties that day at the Keene District Court? I was supervising the security here at uh, the Keene District Court. Prior to court starting that day, did you receive any information from another court security officer regarding a possible security issue? One of my officers, a James Victoria, had approached me, stated he had a gentleman in the courtroom with a hood on his on his head and refused to take his hood down when asked to ask me how I wanted to handle it. And based upon your experience as a court security officer and supervisor, what was the issue with somebody having a hood on in the courtroom? certain court rules and there are certain uh, safety issues we have to watch. And based on this information that you received, what did you do next? I approached the subject, um, identified myself, introduced myself if I will, and, uh, and asked him to take his hood down. That subject, do you see him or her in the courtroom here today? Yes, sir. It's this subject seated at the defense table. Where do you reflect the witnesses identified the defendant, Mr. Durham? It does. What happened after you introduced yourself uh, to the defendant? I explained to, to Mr. Durham that I, um, or I requested Mr. Durham to take his hood down and I explained the reasons why. What did he do in response to that? He declined. What happened next? I explained to him then to, that um, I would inform the judge that he refused to, that he wouldn't take his hood down and, and we'll let the judge handle it. Prior to you going to see the judge, did he ever take his foot down? Negative. What happened next? He, uh, if I can remember right, he explains that he, uh, or he said something to the affirmative that he understood. Um, then I went into the judge and explained to the judge that I had a person in my courtroom that refused to take his foot down for us. Did you have a conversation with the judge? Yes, sir. What were the instructions of the court at that time? The judge told me that. No hats, no hats or hoods on in the courtroom, you handle it. Based upon that, what did you do next? I came back to the courtroom, I approached Mr. Durham, and I asked him to explain the conversation I had with the judge and asked him again to take his hood down. Did he agree to take his hood down at this time? No, sir. Approximately how many times did you ask him to take his hood down? My recollection, it was four or five times. <coughs> What happened after, did he ever take his foot down during these four or five times you asked him to take his foot down? No, sir. What did you do next after that? I asked him to leave the courtroom. Did he agree to leave the courtroom? No, sir. Part of your responsibilities and duties, are you able to give lawful orders in this courtroom? Yes, sir. Part of our uh, responsibilities, we give uh, lawful orders. We look to keep the decorum of the court. If somebody is breaching the rules or the decorum of the court, are you able to ask them to leave based upon your training experience? Yes, sir. What happened after you asked the defendant to leave? Uh, I repeatedly asked the defendant to leave each time he refused to go. What happened next after he continued to refuse to leave the courtroom? I stated something to the effect that uh, I didn't want to have to arrest him over this and or have him arrested over this 
and I went to escort him by placing my hand on his on the on his shoulder or the middle of the back, if you will, and one on the arm, and asked him when to escort him out of the courtroom. Did he do anything to assist you in escorting him out of the courtroom? No, sir. He refused to move. What happened next after he refused to At move? At this time, um, assisted by uh, the state police and and sheriff's department, along with one of my own, we uh, I informed. Mr. Berube that I was, he was being placed under arrest and we went to place handcuffs on him at this time. At this point did he agree to leave the courtroom under your direction? No sir, we, uh, we had to have him lean forward, we placed handcuffs on him, uh, went to ask him to stand up and he refused, he stood up then sat down onto the floor, refused to move at this time. What happened next after? He was carried out of the courtroom by a uh, uh, sheriff's deputy, one of my own people, and, uh, and state police. At any time during this whole t transpired, did he ever agree to voluntarily leave the courtroom? No, sir. You approximate for the court how many times during the span you asked him to leave the courtroom? I want to say at least four or five times. And eventually he did leave the courtroom under the power of uh, many yes, individuals? We carried him out of the courtroom. Were you able to ask, ever able to ascertain the identity of this individual? Through a, web, a local website. What was the name you were able to ascertain? Brandon Durham. No further questions, Does Mr. Durham have any questions of Mr. Walton? Um, no. Okay. Assessor? No. Does the state have any further witnesses? Yes, Your Honor, the state calls Trooper Gazer to the stand. Raise your right hand. Testimony about to given the matter now being heard before this court. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Stop you, God. I do. Mr. Brigade, how are you employed? As a state police trooper with the Department of Safety Division of State Police. <clears throat> how long have you been so employed? Since April 10th, 1998. Are you a certified police officer in the state of New Hampshire? I am. I was certified in 1994. Did you have the power of arrest throughout the state of New Hampshire? <clears throat> I do. I want to draw your attention to October 19, 2009, approximately 8.30 in the morning. Were you working at that date and time? I was. Do you remember where you were located? Yes, I was here at the Keene District Court for the purpose of handling uh, state police arraignments that morning. At that, that specific date and time, do you remember observing anything or being called, uh, your attention drawn to anything in the courtroom? Yes, um, I was in the front of the courtroom, and at one point I was approached by Trooper Peruby, a detective with us. Uh, he alerted me to a situation that was occurring behind me uh, with the court security personnel having difficulty with the gentleman who was apparently uh, failing or refusing to remove the hood from his head. You sit at the table here <coughs> as this was happening? I was. Did you turn around to see what was happening? I did. Um, upon hearing that, my duties were, were finished for the most part there. I then went to the rear of the courtroom where I could observe everything and uh, observe the further um, conversation between that individual and the court security people. Did you observe an individual with a hood on in the courtroom? I did. Is that individual here in the courtroom today? Yes, it's uh, Mr. Durham seated at the, uh, the defendant's table. What happened next after you made these observations? I observed that uh, security officer uh, Walton had a conversation with this individual. Uh, the gist of the conversation was that um, the request was to remove his hood. Uh, Mr. Walton then told the individual at one point that it wasn't his rules, it was the court's rules and subject to the judge's approval, and he offered to actually go see Judge Burke for uh, guidance uh, based on the situation. And then Mr. Walton leave the courtroom to go see the judge? He did. Okay. And Mr. Walton ended up returning back to the courtroom? Yes, a short time later he returned. He explained to Mr. Durham again that the judge had asked <coughs> or ordered that his hood be removed. Uh, if he so refused, he was going to be asked to leave the court. During this time that Mr. Wallen first made contact with the defendant, 
went back to Judge Chambers, he came back up. Did you ever see the defendant remove his hood? No, I did not. What happened next after Mr. Walton <clears throat> came back into the room and made contact with the defendant? Uh, after a few seconds of that conversation, uh, Mr. Walton asked Mr. Durham to leave the courtroom several times. Um, at one point, Mr. Uh, Durham actually pulled the hood down from his head. Um, again, he was asked to leave by Mr. Walton. At one point, Mr. Walton uh, put his hand on his back and said something in the effect of, let's go, as if to escort him or usher him from the courtroom. During this whole proceeding between Mr. Walton and the defendant, do you ever see any signs that the defendant didn't understand what Mr. Walton was communicating to him? No, it seemed like he understood perfectly, and uh, his tone of voice, when he would give short answers, appeared to change to me to the point where several members of the public seated near him got up and changed seats. What happened next after? <clears throat> At that point, um, Mr. Walton requested assistance with taking Mr. Durham into custody. Uh, handcuffs were placed by Deputy Paul Lett. Uh, Mr. Durham was asked to get up and leave on his own power. Uh, he stood and then he went to the floor. And that's where he remained until he was physically removed by several individuals. <clears throat> During this whole time frame, did the defendant ever voluntarily leave on his own accord? He did not. You, you, you know uh, Mr. Walton, Security Officer Walton? I do. He worked here before that date? Yes, he has. Do you know him to be a person that monitors the safety and security of the courtroom? Yes, I do. Did you hear him at any time during this whole procedure ask the defendant to leave the courtroom? I heard him ask multiple times, four to five or, or even more. No further questions, Your Honor. Does Mr. Durham have any questions of uh, Trooper Guy? No, Knight? I don't. Thank you. Uh, I say there's no further witnesses. Stay with the rest. Very good. Uh, does Mr. Durham wish to testify in this matter? Uh, no. Anything that either the state or Mr. Durham wishes to uh, tell me? Um, no. Um, That's it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take this matter under advisement. In the event that uh, I should find Mr. Durham guilty, what is the state uh, seeking? I say we ask for a $1,000 fine, $500 suspended for a period of one year based upon defense good behavior. I will take this matter under advisement. So notified. Okay. 